Here are five more underrated but awesome multi-classes in D&D. The Spy Master. The Spy Master is a rogue artificer combination. And yes, it sounds crazy, but hear me out. This build is the ultimate technical infiltrator, gadget master, and spy. Plenty of rogues already prioritize intelligence, so a two-level dip into Artificer fits in surprisingly easily with subclasses like Arcane Trickster or Inquisitive. The value here is adding the Artificer proficiencies and spellcasting to the rogue. Firstly, you grab proficiency with shields, which is amazing for rogues. Pretty much a free plus two AC because you're not really using that free hand for anything anyway. Then you get access to spells, and that includes the Booming Blade and Green Flame Blade cantrips, which is a huge upgrade in damage. These blade damage cantrips take your whole action to cast, so if you're a Paladin or a Hexblade or a Ranger, you're giving up your two attacks for one big attack instead. But rogues only get one attack per turn anyway, so for you, it's just a huge damage boost. Then Booming Blade deals extra damage to a target if they move before the end of their next turn, and you're a rogue. You can disengage as a bonus action. You hit them with the Booming Blade, run away, no opportunity attack, and if they want to chase after you, they take even more damage at the start of their turn. But also, don't sleep on the other great Artificer spells you get from just a two-level dip. Guidance for support, Fairy Fire for advantage and sneak attack on every single hit, Cure Wounds for some good old-fashioned healing, Disguise Self for roguish infiltration. And if you wanted to theme your rogue more like a spy, I had a player who themed their Disguise Self as those Mission Impossible face masks. Yes, technically they were using spell slots, but in universe, it was treated as all gadgetry and it was badass. And speaking of gadgets, your second level artificer infusions are amazing. Enhanced defense gives you another plus one AC on top of your shield, and returning weapon is basically mandatory if you want to be a thrown weapon based rogue with a magic dagger. And of course, replicate magic item is just amazing, giving you a ton of spy themed equipment. Rope of climbing, goggles of night, alchemy jug for free poison acid and alcohol, or just a good old fashioned bag of holding. This is an ass kicking, flavorful build that boosts your damage, utility, and defenses for just a two-level dip in Artificer. The Bonk. The Bonk is a barbarian monk multi-class which simply should not work but does. Monks and barbs seem like they'd go together terribly, because most of their abilities either overlap or literally don't work together at all. Both get unarmored defense, but it's based on different stats and doesn't stack, and rage only works with strength-based attacks, but monks prioritize dexterity. Hell, even to do this multi-class, you need a 13 in strength, dex, and wisdom, so your starting stats are going to be a little bit wonky. But none of it matters. Even though this build should suck, because there is no way to get good AC and also have good stats and also have good use of your features, there's a hack and it's called the Tortle. Tortles are a race in D&D that get a flat base AC of 17. To do this build, you ignore dexterity, you ignore unarmored defense, and you are Raphael from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. We're all about punching people as many times as possible and adding your rage bonus to every single hit. This is a strength-based monk concept. You start with a level in Barbarian. You get your D12 hit dice, you get your rage. Then it's monk time. A couple of levels in Monk picks up your flurry of blows, and Tortles start the game with a d6 damage dice for unarmed strikes, so your damage is already respectable. At level 3, you're going to be attacking with a longsword, which counts as a monk weapon thanks to Tasha's dedicated weapon feature, and then following up with a flurry of blows bonus action. That is 1d10 plus 2d6 plus 9 plus 6 damage. That is awesome, and all the time you're rocking 17 AC and taking half damage from most attacks thanks to your rage. Once you reach level 3 in Monk, you get a subclass, and grabbing the Way of Long Death gives you temporary hit points anytime you reduce an enemy creature's hit points to zero. And because you're raging, those temporary hit points are kind of doubled, because you resist most incoming damage anyway. Once you've picked up the Monk extra attack at level 5, you can go back and take a couple more levels in Barbarian. That can snag you a subclass like the Totem Bear, letting you resist basically everything in the game, or Ancestral Guardian, letting you draw fire away 
away from your allies. Reckless attack also gives you advantage on all your attacks, which is kind of a big deal when you're attacking four times a turn. And of course, having a high strength score makes you a fantastic grappler if you want to take the build in that direction. Rage for advantage on athletics checks lets you push enemies prone super reliably, giving everyone advantage on melee attacks against them. Just considering how terrible this multi-class should be, it's actually amazing, and it's all thanks to the turtle. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, for the win, the bonk is badass. And if anyone objects to the union of this beautiful couple, please speak now. Or I have... object! <laughs> the groom screwed me last night! What? He threw a terribly balanced boss fight at the whole party! TPK knows all! Wait, do you mean he screwed you? in D&D. &D. And he won't let me craft an epic arm cannon grappling hook that fires flames. There's no such item in the game. I don't care. Wow. Y'all need Ryoko's Guide. What? Ryoko's Guide to the Yokai Realms is out now on Kickstarter. Transform your games with epic rules expansions for incredible, evolving combat, over 25 new races and subclasses, and an all-new element bender class. Plus, a harvesting and crafting system to create incredible magic items from fallen foes, and even craft your own personal familiar from the soul of a defeated kaiju. Over 40 new spells, 50 50 new monsters, 5 epic adventures, martial character enhancements, and one enormous kaiju dragon mini. Back today for the final chance to receive this beautiful, free resin dice set only for early backers. Grab Ryoko's Guide to the Yokai Realms now, transform your game, and expand your world. Link in description. The Biter. The Biter is a fighter with three levels in Bard. Being able to sing while you slaughter is already a ton of fun, but these two classes actually give each other a ton of really cool stuff. Firstly, any spellcasting class who can walk around in heavy armor is kind of badass. Fighters also pick up a fighting style which you can tailor to the type of Bard that you want to be. Dueling is a great option if you want to be a high AC, longsword plus shield strength based Bard, or you can go two weapon fighting or archery if you want to go for more of a dex-based bard. And then the three levels in bard take that brutish fighter into an intellectual, and it all comes from the subclass College of Swords. This lets you use your weapon as a spellcasting focus, and you can pick up another fighting style. But most importantly, it gives access to the blade flourishes. These little maneuvers let you use a bardic inspiration die to deal some extra damage and bump your AC, or move another creature, or attack all the creatures within a five foot radius of you. Combo this with the Battlemaster Fighter subclass and you become a technical machine in combat, able to enhance pretty much every single attack you make with some kind of flourish or maneuver. Seriously, this is combat versatility gone wild. Also, remember that even though the Swords Bard features are called blade flourishes, they technically work with any weapon, including bows or guns. Plus, level 3 bard gets you expertise, so if you want to do the whole grappling thing with this build, you totally can, shoving enemies and knocking them prone. Alternatively, take expertise in persuasion or deception to accompany your high charisma and become the roleplay focused face of your entire group. Then, jack of all trade buffs all your skills and your initiative roles, and just by dipping into bard, you pick up an extra skill profession. Efficiency. And of course, you gotta remember, Action Surge does let you cast two spells in the same turn, which opens up some crazy combo shenanigans. And speaking of spells, Bard spells are really good. You've got Silvery Barbs, if you only care about winning and are also evil. But there's also Cure Wounds, Fairy Fire, Enlarge Reduce, Mirror Image, Hold Person, and a bunch of other amazing options to buff yourself and your allies in combat. Bards are probably the most passive spellcast class, and fighters have a negative reputation of being able to do nothing except fight. But put them together, and you get this awesome mix of combat utility and support. Plus, it's just funny to hit goblins over the head with your cello. The Penny Pinchin Preacher. This is a tonal cluster bomb of a subclass. You've got the holier-than-thou cleric and the villainous rogue crammed together. And weirdly, it kind of works. Because most rogue subclasses only really need dexterity to be good, you can very happily pump your wisdom to bump up that cleric's spellcasting power. 
It also pumps your perception, the best skill in the game, which rogues can get expertise in at level one. Then of course, the cleric dip gets you proficiency in shields. And we've already talked about why they're awesome on rogues and some great spells. Guidance is amazing on any skill-based build, but the real shining features here are the cleric's concentration buff spells. Because a ton of rogue features like cunning action, evasion, and uncanny dodge basically let you avoid taking damage, you're amazing at holding concentration on those spells. That makes you god tier passive support, able to hold on to a blessed spell that is buffing the entire party for an entire encounter pretty much effortlessly. Then your high wisdom buffs your wisdom saving throws, which are the second most common behind dexterity saves, which you have covered as a rogue anyway. So you're super resilient as well. And then of course, there are just a ton of great cleric subclasses to choose from. Trickery Cleric is the obvious option here. There's a ton of flavor behind it and you can make an illusory duplicate of yourself to distract enemies and give yourself advantage, triggering your sneak attack. It also gives you the spells Charm Person and Disguise Self, pretty much the perfect roleplay spells for a rogue. The Twilight Domain Cleric is also very flavorful and crazy strong giving you advantage on initiative rolls and giving you access to heavy armor if you have the strength to pull it off. It also gives you a frankly ridiculous 300 feet of dark vision for just a single level investment and the awesome early game spells fairy fire and sleep. On the rogue side of things, the assassin pairs beautifully with the twilight cleric's advantage on initiative rolls, especially if you're a bugbear race for that juicy extra damage. And the phantom rogue is also a very flavorful spiritual subclass that ties in with the cleric vibe and gives you even more skill proficiencies for a skill monkey build. My favorite though is probably the soul knife rogue. Some additional pseudo spellcasting via your psionics and access to your psychic blades. This lets you present as an unarmed harmless priest before summoning up a psychic dagger and shanking a fool in the back of the neck. Bear with a flamethrower. We are back with another artificer multi-class. This time we are strapping a flamethrower to a bear. This build is simple, but awesome. Moon Druid plus Warforged Race, and you are basically a Transformer, turning into all sorts of straight up broken early game metal beasts with a boosted AC on top. The Artificer Dip just adds even more badass. Yes, it is a shame to delay your Moon Druid progression, but the upside and cool factor make this an incredible build for more fun-focused games. The real value here is the bonus action options granted by your Artificer subclass of choice. The Artillerist Artificer gives you an Eldritch Cannon, which you can activate as a bonus action every turn, even when you're wild-shaped. The funny option is obviously the Flamethrower, but probably the most powerful one is the Protector. This hands over 1d8 plus your Intelligence modifier of healing every turn to all creatures within 10 feet of the cannon. Most wild shapes don't have a bonus action. You're just swiping away at people with multi-attack and then waiting until your next turn. So if there's one thing that pushes a tank bear druid over the edge, it's handing out free multi-target healing as a bonus action every single turn. It even heals you, making your wild shapes even more ridiculously hard to break than they were already. But that's just one option. You could go alchemist artificer and be a potion brewing druid. Pick up the Hexblood lineage and you are a classic cackling witch with a bubbling cauldron. You can create the Flight Elixir Potion. And now you're not just a brown bear that hits like a truck, you're a brown bear that hits like a truck and can also fly. Or there's the Battlesmith Artificer, which gives you a BattleBot Steel Defender Companion, which can attack alongside you in combat. This can enable your pack tactics for advantage on your attacks if you go for the frankly underrated Dire Wolf Wild Shape, and it also forces incoming attacks on you to be made at disadvantage. I'm not gonna tell you any of these Druid Artificer combos are literally broken, but they are surprisingly good, and in terms of flavor and fun, absolutely S tier. If if you're a very good player on a table with less experienced players and you don't want to dominate everything, or you're in a more fun focused, not quite hyper lethal game, these are amazing choices. Because at the end of the day, it's about having fun, and there is nothing more fun than a bear with a flamethrower. Today is the last day to grab your beautiful free Yokai Dawn resin dice set by backing Ryoko's Guide to the Yokai Realm. 
Games. We've also unlocked a bunch of incredible stretch goals, like GM cheat sheets, cardboard game tokens, and an all-new Tamer subclass letting you train your familiar in martial combat. All of that and everything Ryoko's is out now on Kickstarter, link in description, and also on screen. And yeah, that's basically all I got. See you next time.